Thank you uh, for the introduction. As, uh, as my colleague already uh, mentioned, my name is uh, David Vesakovic. Uh, I work as a software engineer at Data, Data Artisans right now. And today I'm going to talk about detecting patterns in uh, event streams. In other words, I'm going to uh, present you the effort of uh, integrating CP library, which is uh, available in Flink CP for quite some time, with uh, SQL. And uh, this effort is um, like driven by the effort is to, to uh, support the much recognized clause uh, within SQL. Uh, but yeah, so uh, for those that uh, may know or may, may not know, uh, data artisans are the original creators of uh, Apache Flink. We provide the DA platform, uh, which is a um, out of the box uh, streaming uh, platform that comes with uh, some. Uh, proprietary components like application manager and uh, streaming ledger, which was uh, introduced uh, just uh, yesterday. Um, but coming back to, to the doc, to the talk, let, I would like to start it with, uh, with just like a thought experiment why people uh, like SQL, why do we, like there's so many talks about SQL, why all the streaming platforms uh, try to, to, to provide SQL or SQL-like solutions uh, to their platforms. So, like, first of the points that, that one might think is that SQL uh, has become like a well-known interface for, for, for data processing. Pretty much everybody, like most of the people involved in data processing already know uh, the language. It's, uh, it requires no programming, so it's, it's easier to learn and like, but the most important feature uh, that I think makes SQL so powerful is that it is a declarative language. So, it, uh, so you don't need to express how do you want to compute your results. You only specify what do you want to compute. Uh, and this, uh, this has some, uh, some interesting implications because like uh, before running the, the computations, the engine knows pretty much everything that the, pretty much everything about the uh, results and what, what will be computed so that it can uh, perform some out-of-the-box uh, optimizations. Uh, like, I don't know, like filter pushdowns or like uh, resort, changing the order of uh, some computations, etc. Uh, it's also a um, very good uh, way to reuse some parts uh, previously provided. I, so, uh, what I mean is that we can already reuse many uh, built in uh, functions like scalar functions, aggregations. There are many um, functions provided in the, in the standard SQL. If we are missing something, we can um, write our own user defined functions and reuse it in, uh, at the different stages of, of our uh, queries. So, for example, we can reuse the same functions in, in, I don't know, like in, uh, in grouping, in projects, on projections, so that like, it's, it's re re really, um, we can combine them uh, pretty, uh, in a pretty flexible way. And uh, another Extremely important feature of SQL uh, that I thought it deserves a separate slide is uh, that SQL um, enables us to, to provide a unified way uh, for executing our queries both on batch as, as, well and, and as well as on streams so that we can execute the, uh, the same query both on uh, finite data set as well as uh, infinite data sets. And this is possible uh, thanks to the concept of dynamic tables. Uh, dynamic tables are, are a concept very similar to materialized views in uh, standard relational databases. Uh, so what it, how it works is that uh, the input stream is converted into uh, ever-growing, ever-appending uh, ever uh, table uh, on which we can execute our continuous queries. Uh, the, continuous, the, the product, the result of continuous queries is yet another dynamic table, so uh, while executing the, the queries, we operate on, 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 
on a concept of, of those dynamic tables, and only when we have to uh, output the result, some, somehow materialize the view, uh, we convert the, the dynamic table back to stream, and for example, we can uh, write it back to, to some external system or do whatever we want. Um, yeah. What I wanted to do in this talk is like drive it by, by example, so uh, that's why I decided to, uh, to base my, my examples on, on a data set of taxi rides, uh, which is a public data set of uh, rides in New York City. Uh, the data set consists, uh, like each, each ride of a taxi consists of two events, first for the start of a ride uh, and second one for the end of the ride. It also con uh, contains some additional um, fields like the ID of the ride, ID of the taxi, of the driver, uh, the coordinates uh, where, where the event happened, of course the timestamp of the event and uh, additionally uh, the number of passengers that, that were in the taxi. Okay, so to show you um, first, uh, to show you some basic example of, of SQL itself, uh, let's imagine we want to compute uh, how many rides happened in a 30 minutes windows in a single area of, a, of New York. Uh, so basically we would like to have some, some kind of a um, like histogram per, per 30 minute periods. And how we can do it with SQL uh, is, is, is pretty uh, easy. So what we do is just uh, group by, first of all, the uh, cell ID, so it's the, the area ID. Uh, and in here, you can already see that we uh, use some user-defined function, uh, which we can uh, provide to SQL Flink supports user-defined uh, functions. And, uh, also, as, a, as the second parameter, we group by a tumbling window, which is basically a, a, a 30 minute, the, the, the 30 minute periods that, that we want to calculate the statistics for. Uh, and as I said, like we, uh, of the reusability, so we can, for example, use the user defined functions defined once, both in the group by, uh, as well as we can just extract it so that like we don't have to implement different interfaces, we just reuse the same, uh, the same functions pretty much every, everywhere in the uh, SQL structure. Uh, just so I, I wanted just to show that uh, it's with SQL, we can do quite powerful computations in, in a very simple and self-explanatory way. Uh, probably if you were to, to write it with, with code with Java code, it will be a, a bit uh, a bit longer example. Maybe not too much, but but yeah. Um, so right now, with uh, we like maybe not right now, but the, at the very start when when implementing the the, the SQL, uh, providing SQL like interface, the the Flink community decided to to follow standard SQL, so uh, so not to like. Uh, make some shortcut and provide some SQL-like interface. Uh, the community decided to, to follow the, the, the standard, the, the ANSI SQL. Uh, and as of now, we already provide um, many, uh, a, a huge subset of, of the features of, of SQL. So we can, uh, besides like just simple uh, selects or, or group bytes, as, we, as we've seen on a, on a single field or even on, on Windows, we can do as well joins both windowed and non-windowed. Uh, we can provide scalar, user-defined functions, uh, scalar aggregations, as well as uh, table uh, tables. Uh, table fu functions which uh, based on multiple rows produces multiple rows uh, of course we can uh, reuse uh, many mul multiple built-in functions that come of the uh, come out of the box uh, I'm not gonna go very f uh, far into the details of, of a SQL but if you're interested in this uh, in this part uh, I really recommend uh, a talk by my colleague Timo, which will happen just right after this one in, in Kaisel House. Uh, but right now, uh, what I want to focus is, is, is like the, the main topic of, of this talk, which is uh, detecting patterns. Uh, so why do we, why is it a, like a separate 
a bit separate topic is that like with a standard SQL, it's quite hard to solve some problems. Uh, to show you an example, let's imagine that we want to find rights with some mid stops. So that, uh, for example, so uh, what, what I mean by mid stop is that uh, between the, the start of a ride and the end of the ride, some other ride for the same taxi and, uh, and the driver started. So that just like the, the driver started two, two rides at the same time. And it, it would be, I don't know, maybe somebody could implement it with SQL. I, I'm definitely not capable of figuring out like, how to solve that problem with, uh, with a standard SQL like that, that most of the people know. That's, but that would be extremely simple to solve with CP library. What we would have to do is just to provide a pattern that we, were, we would be looking for. So, uh, so to say, we would provide a pattern consisting of two consecutive events. The first one would be, uh, like both of them would be start of a ride. So if there's two events uh, following each other for the, sa for the same driver, yeah, that's, that's an important fact that, that we would apply this pattern to, to a stream uh, of events uh, kit partitioned by, uh, by, a drive, uh, by, by a driver ID. So uh, every, um, every event uh, concerns the same, the same driver, then we would apply such, such pattern and from the f uh, founded matches, we would just extract what we really care about. So that, so in this example is the uh, right ID uh, of, the, of the first uh, right that, that, that started as the first one. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that example is uh, very simply uh, simple to solve with uh, CEP. Uh, and let's check, let's uh, look how we can uh, reuse the, the simplicity of CEP library uh, from SQL. Uh, and with, uh, with some help comes the, the match recognize clause, which is an ex uh, extension to, to the SQL standard, which was introduced in 2016. So it's pretty new. Uh, the, the, match, the, like the, the, the usual use cases for, for, the, uh, for the clause as, uh, as uh, listed by, by, by the authors of, of the standard are such as uh, stock market analysis, where we uh, want to find some patterns in, in, uh, in a changing uh, value so that we, for, for example, can uh, find some trends uh, in, in, mar in stock market values changes. We can track some, some uh, uh, unwanted customer behaviors if, for example, after some, some action on our web, uh, web page, he does some unwanted action. Uh, we can track some uh, money laundering. So, for example, we are looking for uh, a few small transfers of money followed by some larger one uh, as well as some other uh, use cases as, as service quality uh, so how many like in between how many mm, interference were there uh, in the course of, of, of some some call or I don't or maybe network intrusion detection that there's probably even more use cases, but the, the, the common ground for all of them is that we really care about the order of, it, of, of the events. So we not care only about the statistics, but we care that the events happen in some particular order. Uh, and how, so let's uh, have a look how we can reuse that much recognized. So um, the much recognized, um, fits into like a standard SQL, so, if, uh, so it applies to, 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 a, to a table. Uh, so if we have uh, uh, like a simple standard select from where clause, the match recognize will be always applied to the, uh, to the table. So the, the, the match recognize will be applied as the first uh, part of our query and only after that uh, any other will be uh, applied. So like where or, or group by and et cetera. Uh, but coming back to, to our example with uh, finding mid stops, let's analyze how we can solve this problem uh, with the match recognized and comp we might later on compare it with the CEP example. So what we uh, start with is that we want to uh, find events, uh, for, like find the patterns for, for, uh, for, for, for we, 
from events within the same uh, driver ID, so that's why we have to partition uh, our stream by the driver ID, which is uh, um, equivalent to, to a standard key by in, in data stream API. Later on, we have to provide the order. As I said, the, the match recognize, uh, we, in match recognize, we really care about the order of events, so that's why we have to uh, specify what event, uh, what order we, we want to uh, apply in the events. And like the, the only restriction in here is that uh, as the first one, we always, as the primary order of events, we, uh, we have to specify either event time or processing time. And later on, we can provide some secondary sorts so that if events come at the same time, we, uh, we can somehow sort them and have always um, repeatable results, deterministic results. Uh, so that's, I would say, as, as the start, is, is basically some, some pre-configuration of our stream and uh, just after that, uh, we can go to, to the uh, most interesting part, which is uh, constructing the pattern that we are looking uh, for in the stream. Uh, so similarly, as, the, is, as in the SQL example, we provide a pattern consisting of uh, two variables. Um, the names can be uh, arbitrary, any, uh, anything that, that we like. So for example, in here, uh, S stands like for the start, E like the, the end event of, of our pattern. <clears throat> and for those variables, we have to later on uh, provide um, some conditions um, that we want to uh, event to uh, to fulfill to, to be um, to be uh, considered like matching to to that part of our pattern. And uh, after constructing the pattern, the last thing we have to do is uh, providing the uh, measures clause, which is uh, where we just ex extract what, what should the results uh, contain. So, for example, because like, uh, the pattern, the match, will consist of multiple rows, uh, because it's, it, like the, uh, it's looking the match recognized looks for patterns across multiple rows so that we have to somehow specify which uh, values from which rows do we care about. So in this case, we just care about the, um, the right ID of the, uh, of the first right that, that, that started. And uh, to, to show you that it's uh, already uh, possible to like, like the, uh, the the effort is already happening to to, to integrate um, this uh, this clause into uh, Flink. I I wanted to uh, to show this example, uh, so I will just execute this query on uh, on a data set. Uh, so I have it pre prepared in in a file. So we just uh, execute the query, and we will see that after like starting the job, we'll have uh, the results. Uh, so for example, like the, the, the driver ID started this, this right ID and their, this right ID had uh, some mid stops. Uh, of course, like you might not uh, believe me that those are valid results. That's why uh, we can uh, check them. Uh, so in a separate uh, command line, let's just list all of the um, events for this for this driver and check if really this uh, right had some had some mid stops. Uh, so we just query uh, for events of that driver. Mm, driver not. Yes, and we are looking for the. Uh, for the right six, eight, eight, nine, and as we see, those are the three interesting rows. Uh, yeah. Uh, so as we see, like the uh, the right, this right started at uh, at nineteen minutes after midnight, uh, and before it ended, there was a. Uh, uh, right with ID 7925 uh, started in between so that we can verify that the 
at least this row in the match recognize uh, uh, emitted the correct result. Okay, but coming back uh, to the presentation. Uh, what I really also like about the match recognize that it's really easy to extend, to change, to adjust to our new use cases. So let's imagine that we want to change a little bit uh, our use case and find uh, and look for rights with multiple stops, not just one stop, but with multiple in, uh, in between. Uh, so what, how we would adjust uh, the, the example then would be to, to extend the pattern with, uh, with a looping uh, variable in between so that we uh, look for multiple events between the, the start of the write and the end. And we uh, also slightly adjust the, uh, the conditions for our variables so that the start still remains starts, start. The end event uh, now becomes like a valid end of, 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 the, of the first write so that we check that the, uh, that the write ID for this event and this event is the same. So that also shows that we can re reference, uh, we can address uh, uh, fields from, uh, from previous uh, variables uh, and for the, um, for the middle uh, variable, we check that the, the right ID is different. It's just uh, most of the validity check. So I, I really think that with just a few lines, like really uh, adding uh, an, uh, one variable into, uh, into the pattern, we uh, quite, uh, yeah, we, we changed our query quite, uh, in a quite big way. Uh, and, but still, it, the, the, the query uh, remains, in my opinion, very readable and quite, quite easy to understand. Uh, as a other use case that I uh, think much uh, recognize uh, plays very well is uh, finding uh, some, some trends in our data. So like very commonly uh, showcases example is uh, looking for uh, v-shape patterns in uh, in our data so imagine we want to look for uh, some uh, rush hours some peak hours in our data set so, but by rush hours what i uh, what i understand by by rush hours is a, a period of uh, let's say four 30 minutes periods that in which the the, uh, the amount of rights increased followed by uh, two, period, two 30 minutes windows that the uh, amount of writes decreased. So that, for example, only the, like the, the first V will be um, th emitted, uh, while the, the second one, uh, like which is just, uh, an, we, I consider it as an anomaly, that, for example, some, some, uh, some event might happen, and that's just why the, the, the congestion happened in, uh, in, in, in the city. Uh, so we are not interested in events like that, but uh, we are interested for, for periods, periods of uh, continuous growth of the value and later on uh, in periods of a continuous uh, decrease in, the, in that value. So uh, how we can leverage SQL and uh, match recognize, in, uh, especially with this use case. Uh, so what we start with is the, the query that we've seen previously. So we want to compute the aggregates uh, per uh, 30 minutes periods. Mm, that will also show that the integration between match recognize and other components of SQL is seamless. Um, and like that's also a very powerful feature. Uh, so we will uh, reuse this query as a uh, view. Uh, and to that uh, view, we'll apply our match recognize. Right now, in this example, this example is a bit more complex. Uh, so we are looking for, uh, as I said, for third, uh, like uh, right now, the stream uh, will consist of, of uh, aggregates per per window, per 30, 30 minute window and area. So uh, we are looking for to four consecutive period, at least four consecutive periods uh, uh, that the value, that the amount of rights increased, followed by at least two period, 30 minute periods that the uh, amount of rights decreased. Uh, and what's very interesting in this example is that we can um, reference not only uh, 
vari simple uh, variables as we've seen pr before so that for example when we uh, said that the right idea of the end and right idea of uh, the start has to be the same but we can also reference uh, values uh, within the, 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 the looping um, variables so we can say that um, each element uh, accepted to the uh, up variable, up part of, the, of our pattern has to be, uh, the, the amount of writes has to be uh, larger than uh, amount of writes for the previously accepted row to, to that uh, variable, or, if, there, or there, as if it is the first one, there is no previous uh, row accepted to the up. The same we can do uh, for the down. Uh, variable, uh, so we check with the, the previous one and f for the first element of the um, down uh, part of our pattern, we check with uh, the last uh, element accepted. So we can re reference the, the previous element of a looping pattern as, as, uh, as well as the last element that was accepted to a looping pattern. Uh, we can also uh, use those uh, functions in the measure clause so that we can, uh, for example, uh, extract the, the first element uh, of, uh, of such period and, uh, and last element of the period. So, uh, yeah, so uh, additionally to, to the functions that we've uh, used in the define uh, part, we can as well use the, the first element of a looping pattern. Uh, and uh, in the, we can use them in, in the measures clause uh, in here. I'm using them to, to uh, return the, the start of uh, such, um, such period of increasing uh, amount uh, and uh, as, uh, as the end time of, of, of the rush hours, I use the last element of, of the increasing part of our uh, pattern. So right now I would like to showcase this example as well. Uh, so I'll move to, to the SQL client. Uh, so first we create the view uh, that we'll be using in the uh, second part. Um, and later on, uh, I will apply the query from the example. Uh, yes. I hope it's visible. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, because it's constantly uh, finding uh, new patterns as, as, as it is looking for patterns in stream, it, it changes, but we can just go to some, some previous page and we can, uh, we can check that, that uh, as, as, as the uh, query said, that, that there, there has to be at least uh, four uh, periods of, of 30 minutes so that we can see that each of the uh, like the, the difference between the start is, and the uh, end of, of such period is always at least uh, two hours. So in this case, it's, it's four hours. Uh, in other case, it might be uh, 5.30. Yeah, in, in this example, it's, for example, two hours. We can also uh, check as, as uh, the, the pre-count was the, um, was the, uh, the amount for the first period, so it's uh, for, for the first period accepted, uh, the, the rush count is uh, is the maximum maximal value uh, that we achieved in in, in the period, and uh, the post count is like the uh, the first after uh, after the, the the maximal value. So you can uh, like also uh, verify that there's no like uh, for like those results uh, look valid. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Um, so I somewhat um, kept the, the bad news to the, to the very end. Uh, so it's uh, still ongoing effort. So it's uh, what I showcased is not uh, in the uh, code base of Flink, uh, but as I envision it, the, the first version uh, will uh, probably support uh, the quantifiers, so we'll be uh, able to, 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 to specify like the, the looping patterns, I call them, uh, like, so we can say that we expect one or more, zero or more, or like some uh, concrete number of times that, to, that event to happen, we can we will be able to to, to specify um, 
is is the, the, uh, the is, should the pattern be greedy so that it uh, tries to, to provide the longest example or reluctant so it, that I mean every every part uh, a big uh, step that we've done in uh, 1.6 was to to uh, support in, in CP library to support, uh, to unify the behavior of uh, after match skip. Uh, I didn't go into details about that, but it's, uh, uh, it specifies which events can uh, start a new pattern. Uh, that was, uh, in, at least uh, from my perspective, a very, a very big step to integrating the, the match recognize uh, with SQL uh, as, as for uh, what definitely not going to be supported in the first version uh, are functions like alteration or permutation where we can uh, in, in our pattern say that uh, some two events might, might uh, um, occur in, in order, like, uh, any arbitrary order or uh, that we can uh, like branch our pattern that, that those kind of uh, operations won't be supported in the first version. Uh, I also don't think uh, the first version will uh, support the aggregates so that we can uh, aggregate um, uh, that we can define uh, our patterns by, based on some aggregates uh, within our within the pattern. Uh, that's mainly because uh, that the CEP library currently doesn't support it. Uh, yeah. And uh, as a summary, or as some, some taking points, uh, I really think that uh, integrating the, the, the CP library with, uh, with SQL will open up the SQL for, for new use cases that we really care about the order of events. So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, if, if, if we really care about order of events, we, uh, we probably should at least have a look uh, at the match recognize. Uh, and from the CP perspective, I think it will also enable us to, to, to reuse uh, in a simple way uh, all the SQL goods. So uh, already we will uh, we'll be able to, to, for example, the measures clause use some uh, some out of the box, some scalar functions that are uh, available in SQL. And uh, as I said, uh, it is still in experimental uh, phase. It's still an, an ongoing effort, but as you said, it, it somehow it works. So uh, that, that I, I try to, to uh, execute uh, some queries. If you want to experiment, give some, some feedback about how it works, what, what it is still lacking, you can check out uh, my uh, GitHub branch, where uh, which uh, in th th this is the version that I used in this presentation. Uh, yeah, um, and at this point, I, I wanted to to finish my talk. Uh, thank you very much, and if you are, have any questions, then I will be happy to answer them. A nice talk first. Uh, so you didn't talk about uh, selection and consumption policies in pattern matching. Uh, by selection, you mean? Uh, that means sometimes you can select the same or consume the same event multiple times or not? Yes. Uh, yeah, so that, that's uh, what the aftermatch uh, clause uh, comes in. Um, so there are like a uh, few different strategies. Uh, so I'll just maybe uh, quickly go to uh, just one example that I used in here. Uh, so that, that's the query that I uh, was executing. And for example, in here, I use some custom strategy, which is the after, uh, after March skip past last. So that means uh, that if uh, some match, uh, if the, after the, the as soon as some uh, match was constructed, uh, none of the events that, that uh, like none of the events that happened be before the last of uh, of the event will be considered in any subsequent matches. Uh, there are other strategies, like for example, uh, that every event can constitute a new match, so that uh, um, event basically can uh, occur an arbitrary number of, of matches. Uh, we can also like uh, say that. Uh, 
new matches can start at like some uh, in some uh, in the middle of, of like uh, of a match. So that that's how we can um, change the, the behavior, which uh, which uh, elements can be. Uh, and uh, another thing. So this work is based on some research work. Or by uh, the work you mean the match recognized yes. loss? Yeah. That's basically a SQL standard. So uh, it's it's in the SQL standard we try to uh, okay. to implement the and behavior. Do you have any support? There. And do you have any support for negations or the absence of events? Uh, match recognize uh, doesn't have uh, support for for it uh, with CP library itself. Because uh, uh, yeah, uh, CP library is uh, a bit richer in some areas uh, that than much recognized. Uh, we do have uh, some limited support of uh, negations as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, is every SQL query executed uh, as a separate thing job? Yes. yes. Uh, how does uh, the performance uh, for, uh, S for, for, for example, this uh, uh, SQL query with the rush hours compares to if we just write a process function uh, and keep this uh, three, uh, four, uh, four, four, four windows as a state, for example? Uh, uh, and also the, how large will, will, the, will be the state compared to writing this way? So, I would say it depends on uh, on the pattern that we specify, but uh, probably uh, in most cases uh, this will perform a bit worse and uh, uh, will have a bit larger state because uh, it's not like uh, um, it tries to solve uh, multiple different. Uh, uh, use case like with um, with some uh, in an abstract way with a unified way, so we cannot do uh, like uh, uh, any optimizations uh, specifically for your use case. Uh, it's based on a machine state that will that tries to cover all of those uh, use cases. So probably it will perform uh, a bit a bit worse, but uh, you gain the the feature of like extensibility and ease of uh, de developing it rather than having to uh, write your own code all for each case. Thank you. One more question, maybe. I think. A short question. Can, I'm not sure if that's useful, but can you ma uh, mix somehow CEP library and SQL, uh, this match recognized calls, to fill the gaps like lack of negations? If uh, somehow can you mix CEP library with this? As, as I said, like uh, uh, the community mm -hmm. decided to follow the the, the, the SQL standard, so uh, I don't think it's uh, it's like really possible to to. Uh, we don't want to, to change what was designed in the in the standard uh, to, to comply with, with mm -hmm. some some CP. So what's not possible with the, the SQL standard rather won't be supported in in, in, in the okay. much recognized. Yeah. That, that's a good answer. Thanks. Okay. okay. Then, Thanks then. Then yes, yeah, thank you, David, for the nice talk. Uh, so we have one more announcement. Uh, as you probably already heard, we have one more last-minute cancellation of the next talk uh, from Joran Ellender from ING. It has been cancelled, but there are still three exciting talks coming in parallel in 10 minutes. So please make your way to other stages.